When we talk about Wall Street today, everybody knows what we're talking about. But when we think back, what is the precursor to Wall Street or what's the backstory here? How did this kind of capital market evolve out of something and 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 what is it maybe headed into in the future? So in this section, what we're going to do is spend some time talking about the history of capital markets in general. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, stick around. What do we mean when we say capital markets? Well, we're talking about markets or exchanges where firms or sometimes people can raise capital to invest in their business. The capital can come in the form of debt or equity. In fact, the initial capital markets were all organized around debt or lending. But today, while the bond market is slightly larger than the stock market, it is the stock market that gets the daily headlines. However, stock markets are much younger than bond markets. Back in the ancient Roman times, wealthy individuals bought and sold equity from one another on occasion. However, there was not a central market where people would go to trade stocks. Instead, one investor would buy a business from another investor and take over its operations. This makes it much more like what we would today think of as a private equity transaction. Centuries later, during the medieval times in Italy, people even banded together, pooling investments into buying businesses. Small groups of equity investors buying businesses seems like what we would think of today as LLCs. It still isn't quite like a modern stock market, though, because these transactions are not taking place continuously. The shares aren't spread across a large number of investors. There is no underlying security to back up the purchase, and so it is different. The first known equity security to be issued was the Dutch East India Company in 1602. Immediately afterwards, Amsterdam became home to the first stock market in history. While the number of companies listed was small, people did gather together to trade investments, which included secondary transactions of equity securities. Secondary transactions just means people buying and selling with other investors, but not the company who issued the security. When the company who issues the security sells shares for the very first time, we call that an IPO or initial public offering, and it is considered to be a primary market transaction. So if I bought shares from the Dutch East India Company in 1602, that would be a primary transaction. Then if I subsequently sold those same shares to another individual investor, that would be a secondary transaction. Amsterdam has a long history of financial markets, including the first IPO and the first documented price bubble in modern history, which was the tulip bulb bulb which was the tulip bulb bubble of the early 1600s. At its peak, the highest priced tulip bulb sold for as much as $750,000 in today's terms but many sold for tens of thousands of today's dollars. Everyone was so interested in buying tulip bulbs because they could turn around and sell the bulbs that they could produce the following year for even more because the prices just kept rising. Then one day, people decided they didn't want tulip bulbs that badly, and the price began to collapse. Eventually, it settled into a normal price pattern, and the bubble was over. But imagine the destruction of the tulip bubble caused on those who were holding an inventory of bulbs when the market collapsed. Some lost everything they had ever earned, speculating aggressively on future flower prices. Later, in the 1800s, London became the center of global finance, and the London Stock Exchange supplanted Amsterdam as the biggest stock market. However, before they ever began trading equities on the London Stock Exchange, which happened in 1925, by the way, a group of 24 securities traders gathered together in New York City and founded what would later become the New York Stock Exchange. In those early days, the market traded mostly bond contracts and equities in the largest four U.S. banks at the time. Throughout the 18 and 1900s, Wall Street, as the NYSE came to be known, took the lead in global finance and never looked back. Today, the New York Stock Exchange has grown to include listings worth about $30 trillion in market cap, making it about 50% larger than the second largest stock market, which is the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ was founded in 1971 as a completely virtual market of securities traders. Today, we think of the NASDAQ as a more tech-oriented exchange, and the NYSE as the more classic old-school stock market of the great American industrialists. However, over the last 10 to 20 years, we have seen the importance of rapidly growing Asian-based stock markets such as the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, Shenzhen Stock Exchange, and Shanghai Stock Exchange. These three are seven largest global stock markets along with the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, London, and Amsterdam stock exchanges.
This is the decade of fintech. And while much of that activity is centered on payment processing, lower cost investing, and development of digital currencies that seek to provide alternatives to the sovereign fiat currencies of the world, it is very exciting to think about where our field is headed in the future and how technology will impact finance going forward.